Hey everyone, this is Mario Rossi with this week's uh, Wednesday Word. Um, Pastor Matt has been walking through the disciples' way. Um, just some brief messages on how we can think about discipleship, um, discipling, um, obviously stemming from the Great Commission as Christ has commanded us to make disciples uh, of all nations. and. One of the best ways we can break this down a little further is just by examining some of the times that uh, the disciples interact with Jesus and observe Jesus uh, during their time with him. Uh, Matt has defined uh, what a disciple is. He said that um, it's a transformed person seeking to obey Jesus in everything. And so if we understand that definition, that we it is to obey Jesus in everything, then we have to transform everything, how we speak, how we act, how we think. Um, everything about our lives has to be submitted uh, to the cause of Christ. And especially in um, a lot of the teachings from Jesus in the New Testament, we see him trying to communicate that very clearly um, from the ground up to his disciples. Um, some of the areas that are transformed, as Matt mentioned, our heart, our mind, our purpose, um, our will, our affection, our relationships. So if we submit to Jesus and desire to obey him in everything, then everything that we once knew is changed, is transformed into being more and more like Jesus. And so discipling and discipleship um, is a lot of learning, but it is not necessarily education the way we think about it because there's no end. Um, there's no graduation season. There is no point in which we have learned everything we know or we, that we need to know about Jesus or that we become exactly like him and we can move on or graduate from discipling um, and from discipleship. And so the passage I want to read from today um, is one of the very first teachings um, from Jesus to his disciples in Matthew 5. It's the Sermon on the Mount. You know, I'm sure it's a very familiar passage. But as we read this, read it and think about it from the discipling context of the transforming power of the gospel in everything. If Jesus changes everything, he must affect everything in our lives. Um, we want the gospel at our fingertips to know that what we say, what we do, it should be an extension of the goodness of Jesus. Think about that and kind of use that as your perspective here in Matthew 5. So starting in verse 1, it says, Seeing the crowds, he, being Jesus, went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, them being his disciples. His disciples came to him on the mountain, and he's teaching them. Matthew 5, verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you you. So one of the very first things that Jesus is telling his disciples is here's the manner in which you should act. Here is how you should portray Jesus in your daily life, no matter your line of work, no matter your level of education, uh, man, woman, single, married, in a relationship. Here's what the life of a disciple should look like. So it's, it's the how. It's a very brief you know, if you are accepting the call of Jesus as his disciples did, here is how you should be expected to act. It doesn't give the answers to every single scenario in life. If this happens, do this. But it's painting a picture of to be a disciple of Jesus. Here is what should be seen and heard and, and the attitude and ultimately 
the ability to overcome, the ability to find joy in trials, which especially now in this time of distance, this time of communicating from screens and not being able to meet in person and at church as of, as of yet, here's how the Christian and the disciple um, should approach these hard times. He goes on in the chapter, verses 13 through 16, to kind of give the, the why. If we know the how, the disciple should know the why. The disciple should not be confused as to why they are living in this way. And so let's read verses 13 through 16 in Matthew chapter 5. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Discipleship and to have the gospel at our fingertips is to know how we should act, how we can find joy in trials, and to know that it ultimately points others to Jesus. It is not so that we can claim reward. It is not so that uh, we can be in a club of Christians, of disciples, but that our light shines and others see it and points to heaven and to our Heavenly Father and His Son who died for our sins. Again, this is so early on in, in, in Jesus' ministry, so His disciples are learning these things as they go. They are they're following Him, listening intently, Certainly, there's many um, examples of scriptures of them asking questions, trying to get clarity based on what they had known before. The, the next part of um, Matthew 5 is about Christ fulfilling the law. So here's how you should act as disciples in the first few verses. Here's why it matters in verses 13 through 16 to show the light to those who do not, know, do not yet know Jesus. And... From verse 17 through 20, the ultimate, well, how can we be so sure? What is our assurance? Well, it it is Christ who came to fulfill the law. So whatever doubt, whatever um, insecurity of these disciples in the early, of the early stages of Jesus' ministry, Jesus communicates to them here in Matthew 5 about the importance of that discipleship family, that how you act, um, how you speak, how you approach others. Think about all the teachings all the way up until chapter 7 as well. These examples of every aspect of your life being altered when you ultimately claim Christ as victor and decide to follow him wholeheartedly. Even if you just have the headings um, in your Bibles, just read some of these in, in, chap- in chapters 5, 6, and 7. Give in to the needy. Do not be anxious. Uh, lust, anger. Chapter 7, um, judging others. Asking and it will be given. Asking the Father for things in time of need. It's a very, very important step for Jesus and his disciples to wholeheartedly know, yes, your life will be changed, but it will be for the better to be a disciple and ultimately disciple others to follow their great commission follows the path of commitment to Christ how he lived desiring to pursue righteousness and holiness and knowing that trials can bring us joy though it is so hard to see that in the moment sometimes so we look at discipleship we look at Matthew 5 and I would encourage you to read 5 even through 7 this this almost like and aside for him and his disciples, as Jesus is teaching them, here's how you act, here's why you act this way, and it's because of the glory in Jesus. Use this as, as, as a stepping stone for you. Maybe there's a section in here in which you've let Christ transform others area, other areas of your life, but anger is still an issue. You've submitted you know, your time and your career to Jesus and following him, but you still have an issue with how you treat your neighbor or family members. You're still prone to anger. Cling to the New Testament. Cling to these teachings. 
Discipling is not something in which we reach an end and we say we're done learning. Uh, we've, we've learned all there is about who Jesus is and what he wants for our life. But it is seen with his own disciples here in the New Testament. It is a constant learning. And, and so in your prayer life, I know Matt talked about that previously about um, Thanksgiving and asking and just being authentic in repentance. Ask those things of God. Ask those things that you do not know the answer to, whether it's a job, finances, that you may feel like is so unclear. He wants you to ask. It is written. Never approach the words of Jesus as anything other than something that you should read and take heed of. It is not there by accident. It is not there as a mistake. Cling to the words of Jesus. When you read through Scripture, always think of how as a disciple, whether you're, you've been a Christian for a year, a decade, 50 years, how you can approach the gospel, how you can have it at your fingertips through the word and through, as Matt called it, the direct lifeline to the Father in prayer. Cling to those words. I hope that's uh, been encur- an encouragement to you. Hopefully these messages and videos have been an encouragement to you. Um, and again, cling to the, the goodness that is Jesus, what he's written, um, and how he's, he guided his people, how he guided his disciples is exactly how he wants to guide us and instruct us through his word.